Hey! Nice. You feel you seem rested. Hey, I really do. I look great right now. I don't know what right. happened. My skin <laughs> cleared up. Yeah, I thought uh, it was a filter. No, I look great. <laughs> I look great right now. And it's just today. I'm sure tomorrow shit face will return. But today. <laughs> you look uh, 20 years younger. I do, which makes me look my age because I look fucking 40 <laughs> years older before. Hey. It's hey. Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Double nickel, baby. 55. 55. Man. They said it couldn't be done. Yeah, they did. They said, oh, you shouldn't be done. Right. <laughs> we said, we're doing it. And then uh, somebody just said, why are you doing it? And then we both paused for a long time. Oh, uh, yeah. And we said, ah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We want Here's it. They kept asking versions of the question. They wouldn't leave us alone. Yeah, yeah. One guy just said, so you're still doing it? And we're like, you're just being a dick. Yeah, that's not cool. Come on, man. Yeah, we are. What do you yeah. care? What do you but care? But then we got out. Because yep. they can only detain you for so long before they charge you. Yeah, that's right. So, and, uh, well. and before we left, as I recall, if I'm remembering this correctly, Bruno Mars said, I'm glad you're still doing it. And that's why we do it. He's a gentleman. That's what I will say about Bruno Mars. The word on the street. Uh, so I picked a song about uh, my form. But so let me tell you, because this I have a story okay. and it actually somehow relates to today's song. Huh. Which is not our tradition. Uh, no, not at all. We're going <laughs> we figure for 55 onward. Maybe some relevance. Maybe. Yeah, maybe it may be. Or just for 55. Or just for 50. Yeah, I don't want to lock you in. <laughs> but I took a little road trip, which is why we missed this week and the week before Alex was on a road trip. And the yes. week before that, we didn't feel like it. So that's why we haven't done it for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but I took a little road trip to uh, see the Bare Naked Ladies in concert. Right. At uh, the Greek in Los Angeles. Oh, I see where this ties in now. And there's a funny thing about Los Angeles when you're visiting it versus living there. Just most cities, of course. But I was, I if you have lived there, I was reminded about how much I fucking love Los Angeles. Yeah. I, I love that city. I love that it's city. Great weirdo. I always, people hate Los Angeles for the same reasons that I like it. <laughs> they will, people will go like, well, like, I don't know. It's just like everybody's kind of doing their own thing and everybody seems kind of in their own world. I'm like, yep, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no one bothers you. Yeah, they, you know, the, the joke I've often made is Los Angeles, no one, no one cares how you're doing. You don't care how you're doing. But no one's connected at all emotionally to the point that LA is the kind of city that if I heard that I'd committed suicide, I'd be surprised. Huh. I would go, I didn't even know I was sad. <laughs> How did he get that? Yeah, I like that city a lot. And I want to tell you a quick story about the greatest restaurant in Chicago. It's called Harvey's. Harvey's in, in Chicago. In, in uh, Los Angeles, the greatest hey. restaurant. What did I say? You said Chicago. I'm an old man. Sure. Yeah. I'm at Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. And you know what? Probably subconsciously, because I still sometimes think there are no good restaurants other than in Chicago. So it's <laughs> probably subconscious. This is about the best restaurant in Los Angeles. Thank Where you. Where is it in Los Angeles? It is on the corner of Palms and Motor in Palms. Wow. In the city of Palms. Okay. So it's on Palms and Motor, and it is a cafe slash greasy spoon. That's the kind of place it is. Right. The name of the place is Harvey's. Uh-huh. So now, Alex, I've just told you the name of the place. Give me a guess as to what the proprietor looks like. Um, he looks like one of the guys who used to play poker with Oscar and Felix <laughs> on The Odd Couple. <laughs> a little fedora that's pushed back a little bit. 
a stubby cigar, <laughs> a big gut, and uh, like suspenders. That is what the owner of Harvey's should look like, probably. Yeah, something like that. The owner of Harvey's is this very nice Japanese lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Now, the reason the restaurant is called Harvey's is because there used to be a restaurant at that corner called Harvey's, but it closed down. And uh -huh. when she bought it, she decided she didn't want to have to buy a new sign. Oh, that is why it's called Harvey's. <laughs> <laughs> I ate at it when it was Harvey's and it was okay. And I ate at it after it became Harvey's with her and the food's delicious. So no damage done. Improvement. Her decision, improvement. Yeah. She brought Harvey's up. On the menu, first time I went in there with the nice Japanese lady, they mm -hmm. have orange chicken. Oh. I like orange chicken. So I decided I would order the orange chicken. I said to the nice lady, I said, I'll have the orange chicken. And she said, we're out of the orange chicken. Oh. So I believe I got a Philly cheesesteak, which is pretty good anyway. But I was like, yeah, next time I'm going to get that orange chicken. Came in there the next week because it was, it's like, my door was like 40 yards from this place. So I was clearly going to eat here a lot. <laughs> so the next time I came in there, I went, you know what? I'll try that orange chicken. She said, we're out of the orange chicken. Yeah, the orange chicken. Oh, well. So I got, uh, she does make a sushi roll there. And it's really good because she knows how to make sushi. She was obviously a chef and she got her own place. Uh, next time I came in there, I go, uh, hey, how about I get that orange chicken? And she leans over because now she knows me a little bit. She goes, we don't make orange chicken. <laughs> that was already on the sign. Wow. <laughs> I didn't want to well, change wait a minute. it. <laughs> so original Harvey, who played poker with Oscar and Felix, yeah. had orange chicken. He sold orange chicken. <laughs> but the nice Asian lady. I don't make orange chicken. You don't get orange chicken. <laughs> no. But she has a Philly cheesesteak. She's got a Philly cheesesteak. She's got weird egg dishes. She's got smoothies. She's got two different uh, sushi rolls that are pretty damn good. Spicy tuna and one that is firecracker roll. I get every time. Delicious. She's got this thing that's a jalapeno stuffed with tuna deep fried. Oh, wow. <laughs> it, it don't sound good. It's good. That sounds wild. <laughs> but her... <laughs> Her, her her sign is some of the items she sells. I know that she makes a Philly cheesesteak because it was on the sign and she figured I can figure out how to make a Philly cheesesteak. Great. And the it's only hard. things on the menu. It's too hard. Yeah. And the only things that are hers on the menu are in paper. <laughs> so there's, the there's, they're, they're up there with tape. Wow. So, cause I, Hey, Listen, I'll run the business. I will make it nice. I ain't fucking paying for a sign. Yeah. Can't wow. make me pay for a sign. I'm a, I'm a chef. I'm not a PR person. Yeah. I'm not spending a fucking nickel. The, my investment was rent. That's <laughs> it. And she's made it work. That's, I, I've been going there for at least 12 years. Okay. That lady That's made success. it. She made it through the pandemic. Amazing. The only time she has help in the kitchen is if her daughter's visiting from college. Wow. And her she's daughter's so, she's solo. Dude. Yeah. Once in a while, you'll see one person helping her that, you know, but if it's open, she's there. Amazing. She is putting together her retirement. She's doing the thing that like immigrants do uh, working hard and appreciating things, <laughs> which apparently wow. makes us mad. Those are like the only cool people in LA. Yep. <laughs> <Seems funny. laughs> people running these weird businesses and like making it work on the margins. Yep. Um, and putting up with God only knows what kind of nightmares. She had a broken credit card machine once, and I would always pay with my credit card or my debit card sometimes. Um, and for a week of me coming in, because I came in like three times a week, she'd say, 
uh, remember to pay me. And I was like, okay, I will. Right. And I did, because I'm not going to stop going there. But it was funny that she knew me well enough by then that she was like, well, he knows not to order the orange chicken. So, <laughs> so yeah. great. I told my friend. I told a friend of mine, uh, Hillary Rollins, of this story, and she said, my God, this is just the setup to the greatest Jewish joke. We're out of the orange chicken. Felt to her like a perfect Jewish story. <laughs> <laughs> it does have a, a great, We're it's a great the, punchline, really. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> I love, just love that lady. So I went and visited. She asked me where I was. I said I managed to buy a house. That seemed unreal to her. I, she's not wrong. <laughs> So then well, I went and saw the bare naked ladies at the Greek. At the Greek, I never saw anything at the Greek. It's supposed to be a great venue. Fantastic, fantastic venue. It's outdoors. You're under the stars. Um, there, the whole place is really big, so you don't feel claustrophobic with the other people there. Right. And they get. You're always gonna. I don't know. Like if you go see the bare naked ladies, or you go see say uh the chicks no longer the dixie chicks they're the chicks yeah if you like them you know you're going to be surrounded by your people yeah and that's kind of what you get at the greek probably that's what you get at most concerts i'm pretending that's just the greek <laughs> well it's, a, it's most smaller venues i think yeah it's ideal in that regard i always say that i go to concerts now where you're not likely to smell pot but you for sure will smell hot pretzels. Oh, that's the smell you get. Yeah, that's really living. Yeah. The, <laughs> the other thing I always say is it's the kind of concert I like to go to where it's like, how was a concert? That was great. I was home by 10. That's... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I used to mock the idea of early nights. We started doing these uh, 530 dinners with our, our old friends. And it rules. Yes, it does. 530. First of all, fantastic service. Everything's yep. fresh. Just prepped. Yep. <laughs> um, and you're leaving just as the place is starting to get too crowded. Yeah. And you're home watching uh, old BBC shows. <laughs> like 730 or 8. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> rules. It's fantastic. Uh, I live. I was in Los Angeles for nine years. And never went to the Greek. The reason, part of the problem is nine years in Los Angeles feels like one year because nothing changes. Like if they, if you could do like a Koyaanisqatsi style shot of the sky and you know, with the clouds rushing by, there would just be, it would just be blue. <laughs> <laughs> like one cloud. Yeah. Just nothing. There were no seasons. Like, yeah. if anyone, if anyone you knew, like, got successful, then they just, like, blipped out of your life. You didn't see them grow. Yeah. They just went away. Yep. <laughs> so it was like, yeah, it was like running on a treadmill. Where you're like, well, I'm definitely running, but I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm tired. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I liked like it that there, part. but I didn't love it. I, I legit loved it. And I always said that Los Angeles looked like somebody dumped out all the parts for a city, but then didn't put it together. <laughs> That's <laughs> good. Just scattered pieces of city. Yep. Everywhere. Yeah, it's funny too, because like if you go into the city, um, first of all, that's not where anybody goes. Yeah. The actual city, which is where you go there to see the Lakers because Staples Center is there. You go there to see one or two events, but for the most part, that's not what's happening. Right. What's happening? A little more so now, but certainly when I was there. Yeah. You didn't go downtown. No. And in most cities, like downtown is, oh, that's where it's bustling and there's trolleys. And if you go to downtown Los Angeles, it was to buy heroin. Yeah. Or get murdered. <laughs> or yeah. both. You can do both. That's true. Mm -hmm. You can multitask. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I, I think that's more or less still true, maybe less true, because whatever's happening, it's on Hollywood Boulevard, which is not a city, or yeah. it's in uh, West Hollywood, yeah. big, you know, because there's cool stuff going on there. It's or, sometimes uh, in North Hollywood, and you're furious because you have to go to North Hollywood, and no yeah. one wants to do that. Nobody wants any part of Lancashire. No. Some dumb time you have to go to Burbank and you're like, oh, I guess Burbank's a fucking thing. Yeah. But or it's Silver Lake. Silver Lake. Silver yeah. Area. Silver Lake, the hipster, whatever's. Yeah. <laughs> Not a city. No. And when you go into this, it looks like a city when you go into LA. Yeah. But it's but it is if you just carved out the dirtiest part of Chicago or New York, you're like, no, just here, all we have is the shitty area. Yeah. And you just plunk it down in the middle yeah. of a of a suburb. A giant shitty suburb. Yep. Like for sure, because if somebody tells you, you know where you should get pizza or whatever, it's by a university, it's but it's never in their damn city. No. It's and like, it, all right, you have to take the 110, yeah, the 105. I'm like, you know, I don't need pizza that much. Yeah. There are some cool sculptures down there um, near the museum that are outdoors, so you don't have to go to the museum all the time to see cool stuff. Oh, there's that's these, Los Angeles. There's these weird um, progressive elephants doing different things that are ev evocative of elephants, but it takes you a while and you go, oh, they're elephants. <laughs> that's pretty good and there's a giant chair which i like that sculpture that's always a good sculpture yeah that's uh, i think when your city reaches a certain population they you, they gave you the giant chair sculpture <laughs> like ah oh, you made it you made it <laughs> welcome aboard dayton here's your big chair yeah your big chair and it's not a comfy chair by the way it's not like a recliner it's, just, it's <laughs> no, like no, no. i think it's a bar stool usually a bar stool sometimes a rocking chair in the yeah. south there's a bar there that i will say rivals chicago as far as dingy seedy bars that are good to get drunk in and i don't remember the name of it but i will say you'll know it when you get to the bar that has the um drama faces with dildos <laughs> that's when you know you've arrived yeah and I saw, I was, and I liked it a lot because I was like, God damn it, you're making sure. Hey, if you're not comfortable with this, get out. It's on the wall. Yeah. Whatever's happening inside is not yeah. as bad. There are boys and girls who are going to do stuff with boys and or girls. You leave if you don't like that. And they're probably in the business. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I had a really, I liked that bar. I really did. And they served fucking cheap drinks. Yeah, there were a few good dives for sure. Yeah. Dive bars yeah. are the only good bars, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I'm that learning, one. Keep learning it over and over again. Yeah. Hey, fancy bar. Cool. $100 for a dump thing. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. a terrible chair. <laughs> it's real bright. It's real bright. Ooh, and my... My waiter's dismissive. That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I can't read this tiny font. <laughs> oh, I yeah. At some point, I just remember when I was still pretending to be young, looking at a menu and going like that and going, and that honestly woke me up. I was yeah. like, oh, no, no, you're not. Stop it. <laughs> stop, stop trying to be young. You're done. Yeah. You're done. Yeah, once you start holding the menu away. Yeah. And tilting your head back. Yeah. Like, oh, the, the bottom part of my eye is probably good. <laughs> probably works better. So funnily enough, because I took this little trip, did a little comedy, saw some friends, uh, ended up taking my dogs on the trip, which I didn't intend to do, but I had to, and it was so worth it. We had so much wow. fun. Yeah. And it wasn't a hassle. It wasn't the well, they're very well behaved little guys and the place I was staying didn't mind dogs. And I actually enjoy my dogs more there than I enjoy them here. And I enjoy them here quite a lot. Because they're on vacation too. Yeah, they were. It was so <laughs> funny. They just were happy as hell. 
they like car rides, and I was like, well, you're going to like this one because we're not getting out for eight hours. <laughs> and they were fine. We stopped at two rest stops to go potty. They behaved themselves. God bless them. They let me pick the stuff on the radio. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> well, you're the driver. Eh? It's yeah. totally fair. Yeah, yeah. They didn't seem to mind. And I, I picked some weird stuff, too. So I went, um, I picked Lemon Tree and and let Spotify create a playlist off of that by Peter, Paul, and Mary. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fantastic. And and, uh, and, and, uh, and a Seinfeld reference. Yeah. And... Uh, and uh, also, we listened to a podcast with Gary Goldman. Nice. And, and I know they're not that into stand up, but they were fine with it. You don't have to be into stand up to enjoy Gary Goldman. No, you can just be into depression. <laughs> Sports? Sports? Lots of things. Oh, yeah, yeah. He played basketball very famously. Yeah. Not famously. He's famous for having told us he played basketball. <laughs> yeah, we're taking his word mostly. So I went to L.A. and I had that experience of being a guy who recently lived in L.A. and is now visiting L.A. and that is a different thing. And Billy Joel wrote this song, Los Angelinos. Oh. And it is clear to me that this is a guy who, I think this is clear he wrote about an experience that is in the relative recent past for him at the time. Yeah, I, I could... It felt like that, or it was about to be the recent past. Yeah, it was a uh, sort of reflective. Um, yeah. It's weird, by the way, that song. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to it, I encourage you to listen. It's a pretty good song, but it's not a big it's not a big hit or anything. No. I don't know if it charted at all. I, I doubt it. So. Um, he plays on a, a kind of an organ or a synthesizer instead of a proper piano, right? Uh -huh. I believe so, yeah. Uh, but it isn't, it isn't that eighties thing where somebody's playing on a synthesizer cause they're not good at piano. <laughs> it's the thing where he picked a different version of his comfortable instrument. And I like the choice. The sound is nice for this song. I don't think a, a, a proper piano sounds like Los Angeles. Agreed a hundred percent. And I wasn't even thinking that you're fucking right. You're fucking right. That's that's so true. Um, yeah, the a lot of uh, what is considered a, like a Los Angeles aesthetic is uh, is synthesized. You know, yeah, it, it's a synthetic city in a lot of ways. Yeah, it makes some sense. Yeah, you know it's funny because a few minutes ago you talked about how the seasons never change, but what constantly changes is anything that could be considered uh local culture historic just disappears constantly oh yeah and in, in fact that changes so much that it then just becomes a blur because nothing meaningful stays for a long time unless it's kitschy like a wax museum right but you know there's that's a for you that's for tourists yeah and i've only been there once because a relative from out of town wanted to see it and I actually had a great time because it's just so stupid. It was fun. But there's a shop you drive by on the way to Hollywood Boulevard that is filled with movie props you can buy. But it's not a tourist attraction. It's just that crap has to go somewhere. Yeah. It's a weird store. It's very weird. Uh, also, how many people in Los Angeles have like collections? Yep. Um, out of necessity or just for the hell of it. I remember I had a, I was dating a girl in Los Angeles and her neighbor was the glassware wrangler for Mad Men. Oh, wow. <laughs> so he had a garage that was like a glassware museum, but also he was like there, like he drew a salary from the show. They'd be like, well, we're doing a scene where they're having somebody over for drinks. So what glasses would they have? Like, oh, I'll be right over with my glasses. Wow. Um, and it's just the sheer tonnage of junk like that that must live in that city. There's a restaurant, and I can't remember the name of it, and I'm embarrassed that I can't remember the name of it, but it looks like you could go eat there. 
and I have at times said we should go eat there because I didn't know better. And it's you can't because it's not open, but it's the lights are always on and it's a diner meant to film stuff in. Wow. But it used to function as a restaurant and they found they could make more money yeah. just leaving this damn thing open. <laughs> and so movie after movie that you've seen, this diner is in it. Wow. Dressed one way or the other. Right. But it's it's got a fully functioning parking lot. It's got all <laughs> the lights are on. It's, everything is clean. The decor is nice. You can't eat there. They don't do that anymore. Yeah. Well, that sums up the city pretty well. Yep, right. <laughs> and yeah, like I said, I love the city. And I, I had a really good time there. I had good time meeting the people who were famous. I had good times doing the occasional thing where I like, oh, I'm about to be huge. Yeah. I love, but I liked it. I liked all that stuff. I liked, I, I have concluded that I liked the experience of failing there as much as succeeding because it was just such a neat city to try to do stuff in. Yeah, I you like, do feel like you succeeded to some degree just by being there and trying to do the thing. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm in it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm in an L.A. story of some kind. And that song, you remember that song, It Never Rains in Sunny California? Sure. Um, that song is about a lot of people's experience where they didn't survive it. Yeah. And uh, I did. I didn't move home. Yeah. Didn't, didn't have to go back home and live with a relative. I mean, to be honest, I would have killed myself before that <laughs> happened, but which I would have considered a success over moving back. Sure. Fucking, so, well, yeah. it's good you made it out the way you did. I have always said I would only move back to my original city. Uh, if I ever did move back, I wouldn't need a suitcase. I would just need a single bullet. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Not going to do that. Yeah, okay. And the city I grew up in is wonderful. And the people there are great. But I ain't coming back. <laughs> I never walk and want to do that. All right. Is it? You're that, talking about Tucson? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. I might. Uh, when you're retired, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's for that city is for college or retirement. And I don't think I'd even move back there in my retirement years. It's too yep. hot. It's hot. It's very hot. If I was going to do hot, then I do Vegas. Oh. Because then there's gambling. Well, I don't feel like that's a good retirement strategy. And uh, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. That's not a good retirement strategy. And yet, isn't it? Isn't it, though? <laughs> I guess uh, <laughs> there's probably more than one way to do it. Take your Social Security money and run it up. <laughs> <laughs> Put it all on red, baby. <laughs> Uh, so, or do whatever you decide. Los Angelinos, 1974 is when this uh, bad boy came out. Boy, and, does it ever sound like it? Yeah, and it is on Street Life Serenade, and it's neat, man. It's a neat little song. I like, I like the music, man. Did you're... it make you think of the song Lowrider? No, but I can see it. It didn't. No, no, I can see what you mean, though. Absolutely. Which I, I don't. I don't know which came out first. But uh, it sort of had that that vibe of like, oh, let's look around this city. Yeah. Low moving car. Oh, by the way, speaking of which, um, what's the song Billy Joel does? I'm blanking on the the name of the song. Yeah, man. He, Yes, that's right. Thank you. Where, where he sings about having to cut down the time of his song. Oh, the entertainer. The entertainer. Um, on my journey, listening to oldies based on Peter Paul and Mary, the song "Look What They've Done to My Song," Ma came on. <laughs> Remember that song? No. It goes, "Look what they've done to my song, Mom. Look oh, no. what they've." And I was listening to it. I was like, ah. Even that Billy Joel song is kind of like this song. That made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. 
And that one is more, much more desperate too, because that one in the one of the lyrics is, "Look what they did to my brain." <laughs> I forgot that song is awesome because, of course, it's from an era where where the music is all just so silly and childlike. Yeah. But the lyrics are pretty brutal. Look what they did to my brain. <laughs> Isn't that a great lyric? It is a great lyric. It sounds very punk rock. And yeah. The music is uh, like a carousel. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, so <laughs> Los Angelinos from the album yeah, Street knows. Live Serenade, I'll start. Uh, Los Angelinos all come from somewhere to live in sunshine, their funky exile. <laughs> That's Great. a cool, yeah. I like the implication that there's a lot of people in LA because they aren't wanted somewhere else. I like the exile there. Yeah. But and also, it's very true if you live there for any period of time, you rarely met somebody who grew up there. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's ridiculous. And you find a ton of people who are so full fucking fooling themselves. Yes. And that are awful people. You know, in the entertainment industry, you can meet some of the nicest, most wonderful people and they in equal measure, but the ones who are monsters are uniquely monstrous. <laughs> It's true. It's a very specific flavor. I so many of the stand-up comics I know are great. You know, they're broken in some way, but they're definitely they have your back. They're fun to hang out with. You could have a dinner with them. You definitely could have a two in the morning breakfast after something happened at a diner. But there's also fuckers who are, you're like, I don't ever want to be caught alone with you. Yeah. And those people are there too. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of rage. And in any other industry, you would, they would just be, oh, well, they don't work here no more because they, their behavior makes it so they don't work here no more. Right. But it takes a lot to do that in, in entertainment where you don't work there no more. Certainly way more than it should. I mean, and you could go, well, they're geniuses. Nah, even the mediocre fucks get a pass. Yeah. I mean, a little bit less than ever, but. Yes. But still, it's pretty vibrant. The, mon and, the monster scene is very vibrant. And I don't know how unique this is to stand up because stand ups versus acting because stand up's mostly where I live. But there's also like, hey, but that guy ain't even funny. Yeah. Why, why are we tolerating him? <laughs> and that's an LA because I'm like, I think people are always afraid in LA, oh, that guy might be the big deal. Yes, there is that fear. Like we're gonna we're gonna pass on the successful pilot. Let's uh, we'll just hire everybody. Yeah. <laughs> then, yeah. If one of them makes us a billion dollars, then we did the right thing. And we look. The other one uh, killed three hookers. <laughs> yep, that's exactly <laughs> right. We'll pay his bail with the successful guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, mid there's that fear for sure. Yeah. Midwestern ladies, high heeled and faded. Great. Now, I don't think it's a double meaning because I don't think that word was used that way way back then. Which but word? Faded. faded. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Because if it was. Referring to the slang definition, uh, drunk. Yeah. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah. Although that works for me. It does, right? Yeah. High heels and faded, drive in, slick new sports cars. With their New York cowboys hiding up in the mountains, laying low in the canyons. With the New York cowboys, what does that mean? I think these are guys who move to LA from New York and uh, act like they're from the West. Okay. I don't but, think it's like they're literally dressed like cowboys. Yeah, no, I didn't either. I was just trying to figure it out. You know, it's funny though, my experience of people who move from New York to LA is the first year they're here they act more new york than they 
could possibly have been acting in New York. <laughs> yes, because if you act like that here, did people just are like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, you're likely to get decked. <laughs> yeah. You know what nobody talks about here is uh, the pizza. <laughs> right. <laughs> when they get to L.A. Oh, God, so many pizza opinions. Yeah. But and there's... If you ask somebody, where's a good place for pizza? They're like, oh, anywhere. <laughs> it's pretty much all good. Yeah. It's, pizza. But... it's all the same. And it is just and they pizza. get out there and they're like, what's this California pizza kitchen? I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> all right. Yeah. And then there's always a constant like, well, you know, people from New York were just more real. You moved here. <laughs> you moved here. Yeah, you forfeited that. Maybe you were more real. But also, you no. Really, you would live where you're from. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Hiding up in the mountains, laying low in the canyons, going nowhere in the streets. I like that, going nowhere in the streets. Um... Uh, go, going somewhere in the sheets could have been the next line, but that's not. <laughs> going nowhere in the streets with the Spanish names. Right. That's pretty good. Making right. love with the natives in their Hollywood places. Making up for all the time gone by. Making love with the natives in the... Hey, by the way, I think this is a, a naive assumption on Billy Joel's part that the person they're hooking up with are natives, because I don't think that's true either. <laughs> it's probably not true. And that's um, kind of funny. People though. who've been there longer. Yeah. But by the way, when you were here, were you, did you know some folks who were born and raised? I met a couple and it always was like, hey, everyone, come look at the freak. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, so where'd you go to high school? And they're like, oh, Los Angeles High School. And you're like, what? <laughs> and they were almost never actually in the business. Be like, oh, I, you know, I teach at the community college or whatever. They yeah. Not interested in the business. Uh, a lot of times, like their parents were both in the business and they hated yeah. it. I never got to see my parents. So now I rescue dogs or whatever. Yeah. My friend Tess Barker, who is a hilarious comedian, uh, is a Los Angeles native. And if you met her and talked to her for 10 minutes, you'd go, I think she's probably from here because she just seems like LA to me. And, but in all the good ways of it, she's very oh. chill. Uh, but not the thing is, she's not affecting chill, which right. I fucking hate. <laughs> I fucking, and it's always dildo dudes with fucking guitars. Do you want to fucking crack over their skull? I, I feel like you are about to unleash a list of names. <laughs> I'm only going to say the name of the one person I like, which is Tess Barker. But these fucks with their guitars and they're fucking running their mouths and about how relaxed they are. People <laughs> yeah. who are relaxed, by the way, don't fucking tell you. Yeah. Tell, hey, hey, Alex, I'll tell you one thing. Goddamn truth. I'm fucking relaxed. <laughs> Tell me one thing about me hey, is I'm fucking chill. All right. Look, do you want me to drive? Just know that I'm chill, man. Was, it, was there a lot of traffic? <laughs> traffic was fine. It doesn't bother me because I'm relaxed. <laughs> yeah, I despise that. Whereas she is just a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> you take anything away from this. Yeah, she's a nice What's person. Her, her version of being chill is the same as anywhere in the country. She'll... He's nice. So when he meets a nice they, person, they feel like there's a that LA chill, big chill has a lot of uh, props. Yes, you know. Yep. Be, just like wear sweatpants and <laughs> lie around. No, I'm chill. I see how many bracelets I have. <laughs> yep. That doesn't seem very chill. It probably took a long time to acquire all those and get them on in the morning. It's like whoever invented hot yoga, <laughs> you know, cause yoga is this nice thing. And then they're like, wow, but what if there was a chance that you'd die from dehydration? Yeah, yoga with steaks. Yeah. That's chill. Anybody could do yoga, which I thought was the point, but <laughs> here's hot yoga. <laughs> there really is an arms race going on with yoga. 
That's what I'm learning because I was into it for a little while and I did find a place that was actually chill. Um, and then that place went out of business. And the more you look around, all the ads for it and all their online presence is about how fucking much you're going to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> Our classes are 90 minutes and there, no place has a level one. <laughs> they all started like intermediate, hard, extra hard. Yeah. Uh, two hours of hell. We That's our promise. <laughs> you won't live through this. How good is our... Oh. How, how good is this yoga? There's an ambulance parked outside just in case. Yeah. <laughs> like, what I... You start at home for two years and then sign up? <laughs> uh, I have a friend who's a yoga teacher, and she's a good yoga teacher, because her whole thing is... Uh, trying to help you feel better after stuff like trauma and stuff. She deals specifically with people who've gone through trauma, like, uh, a, like specifically women who've just had a baby. She helps them out a lot. Right. And at no point does she go, all right, this now in this next thing, I want you to pull something. <laughs> yeah. Your elbows stand up straight and put your elbows on the floor. By the way, when I got mad, I was picturing a specific dude who still makes me mad to this day. Oh, yeah, I'll bet. I could see it. And I'm at an age where stuff don't make me mad. He was propped up. Yeah. He when had hats. Oh, it's on my relaxing hat. Yeah. <laughs> don't put a hat on. Oh, dude. And he's one of these guys who is... I've seen him shirtless more than I should see anyone shirtless. Yeah. At events where you're like, hey, you notice every fucking buddy else has a shirt. Doing a lot of relaxing at the gym. We all have shirts on. <laughs> <sighs> this is a shirt party. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. Look how relaxed I look like in my shirt. And now everyone else around me can relax. Yeah. Don't have to worry about my nipples. Yeah, and that's the other part, is everybody having to pretend that this is okay and... You know, like, or the other thing that'll happen in Los Angeles is you'll be at a party where people aren't doing cocaine. Yeah. And one guy will decide, but we should be, so I will, and I'm the only guy who will. Right. That's not good. You're... Fine. Be at your party where there's cocaine. Yeah. Don't be at my party where it's, we have a, there's a table with cheeses. You don't do cocaine at that party. Oh, if you see cheese, you back out. Yeah, nobody fucking goes, uh, have you tried the brie? I've tried the brie, but have you tried the cocaine? Nobody fucking says that. <laughs> Two different parties. <laughs> exactly. It's LA, there's room. Ah, all of this was to say that I love it. Wait, <laughs> back, back at the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do like that first chunk of lyrics, though. It just, it's pretty darn, um, and pretty directed to the point, I think. Paint a little picture. Yep. Um, I do. Yeah, geographically, mountains and canyons. Yep. We like the little, uh, Social commentary about going nowhere on the streets with their Spanish names. Yeah. Right. Making up for all the time gone by. Oh, I like that too. I hadn't even thought about this, but making up for all the time gone by is like when you're, when you are lucky enough to be making love with a native, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a good distraction from the fact that you didn't get the audition and you, or you're not really working on your screenplay that you keep saying you're working on. Or worse, you have been working on it. It's not going well. Not good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, and time will fucking go by on you. Yeah. Dude, that is such a great observation, too. It all feels like one year, because it really does just kind of... It just goes fast. No real markers. Yeah. You know? And a lot of... I hate it when I lived out there, uh, people from the east would be like, oh, I don't like it because there's no seasons. I like seasons. I would get mad because there's at least two seasons, I think. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this, no, LA is better because it's always nice. 
Um, but then I was like, oh, right. Seasons are a clock. Yeah. I'm late for everything. <laughs> yeah. So it, it is what year it was. It's a, uh, yeah. I don't know that either one's better, but that's definitely, it definitely starts to put its markers on your personality over time. Yeah. You can't hide from it. I liked what LA did to my Chicago personality a lot. I think I really appreciated that. And maybe one of my fondnesses for LA is because I left Chicago at the height of my, I'm kind of mad and I do a lot of drinking. And LA was where I was like, oh, I can relax a little bit. I, it's all right. You know, I'll just keep doing my best, but I don't have to be mad about it. Also hard to drink in LA. Yeah, yeah. I always had to drive 55 minutes get home yeah i used to i used to say the difference between a chicago drunk and an la drunk is a chicago drunk is a drunk who like has so much to drink they took a swing at their mom and <laughs> then they told somebody about it and that person went what'd your mom well, why what'd your mom say <laughs> and then an la drunk is a guy who who has too much wine with dinner a little too much wine yeah. for dinner and they get a little sleepy. <laughs> That's the difference yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Seems right. <laughs> oh. All right. All right. All right. Where am I? Los, Los Angeles. All come from somewhere. Because it's all so easy to become acquainted. So true. Yeah. Electric babies, blue jeaned and jaded, such hot, sweet schoolgirls, so educated. It is so easy to become acquainted. Yeah. Not easy to become friends with anybody in LA, but you can become acquainted with everybody. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing as uh, hiring horrible people. Everyone's afraid they're not going to befriend a person and then that person will become successful yeah you're like on pretty good terms with like 600 people <laughs> yeah so someday this will serve me and it doesn't nope nope and it harms you in the long run on top of it which is right. interesting and people get mad at you they haven't heard from you in three weeks yeah like but i know 600 people <laughs> Can't keep oh, up, man. This next lyric is so uncomfortable and great. Electric babies, blue jean and jaded, such hot, sweet schoolgirls. They're, yeah, man, the super sexualization of women. That's uh, that's just yeah. that's just accurate and unpleasant. Gross. Electric babies is a weird. Yeah. Seventies <laughs> phrase. Yeah. Um. I feel like electric had a specific meaning. Yeah. It's been lost to the sands of time a little bit. The first time I came out to LA with um, Eric Edwards, very funny dude as well, good actor. We were at, we walked on the beach and it was like 50 degrees, maybe. It was cold. It was, and, yeah, yeah. and there was one girl on the beach wearing a skimpy bikini and blonde reasonably good looking or whatever and for some and there wasn't a lot of people on the beach and she came and talked to us and the whole thing didn't make sense to me and eric had been to la before and she eventually leaves and i was like well that was perfectly nice and he goes uh so i don't know how you don't didn't realize this, but she was hoping we were going to offer her money. I'm pretty sure she's a prostitute. Oh boy. And it made me so sad. <laughs> because, I, I, by the way, sex work is work. I think that's fine. But, but it was 50 degrees. And so to be so, like, in your hustle that your personal comfort is just out the fucking window. That just made me sad. That's L.A. Blue jeaned yeah. and jaded. Such hot, sweet girls, schoolgirls. So educated. The word educated here is a mean word. 
I like that lyric. Yeah, it's really great. Um, yeah, not the education we were out no. for. No. Whew. It's still you, my friend. Canning out in the beaches with their Mexican reefers, which, by the way, he does the little accent for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of like, accent work in this song, <laughs> uh, which is his fault for calling it Los Angelinos. Yeah. But then, you know, that's, that's what the word is for it. Canning out in the beaches with their Mexican reefers, no one ever has to feel like a refugee. Going into garages for exotic massages, <laughs> making up for all the time gone by. Now, right. I'm, I'm not saying he's wrong, but exotic massages, I don't think is unique to LA. Not unique. <laughs> Maybe the going into garages for it. Oh, okay. Um, I, yeah, I don't know that every, any, all these things are necessarily unique, but they do paint the picture. Yeah. And it's probably the LA, you know, he's a young musician. I feel like music LA is a different vibe than the what we were seeing. Oh yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Especially in the seventies, I'm sure it was a lot grosser. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the thing about acting LA is like everyone at least pretends they're uh civilized. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I think musicians have a, a thing about uh, being raw. Yeah, and and oddly enough, you're safer with the musician, probably. Because hmm. when the oh, when the kidding. when the actor is dangerous, they're very dangerous, and it is hidden. Yeah. And then that's when you, you know, like your Harvey Weinstein's or whatever, but that's, it's not like he was the only one. Oh, no. There was at least one more. <laughs> it was like two. Yeah, I think there's two. Yeah, that's it, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think, ev I feel like every woman I knew in L.A. had a horrifying story. Yeah. At least one. Um, yeah. And, it and a lot of them left L.A. pretty quick. Yep. Yeah, the best version of it was they had a funny story because they got out of it. They wormed their way out of it. But yeah. it is still fundamentally a horrifying story just because they happen to not. And because they happen to get out of it doesn't make it not a good. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this song is bumming you out, Jim. Oh, yeah, but it's a good in a good way because I think it's written pretty damn well. I like I was just looking at the structure of the lyrics too. It does feel like the and I just looking at them on the page. This feels like a proper poem. Yeah, which is neat because a lot of here's the lyrics don't. This feels like one of his earlier kind of mature songs. Yeah, a lot of there was a lot of silly shit uh, and a lot of him uh, pretending to have a point of view. Yeah. This feels like, no, this is <laughs> really his experience. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. It's funny because he's not, he's not telling some Angelino what they should do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's not telling them what's wrong with them and how he would have done it better. Yeah. He's not in it. No. In fact, he's giving no advice at all. He's just telling you about a place. Yeah, and there's no characters. There's usually, you know, there's no names. Yeah, that's true. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's very unique now that I think about it within what he does. Yeah. There's not like, you know, you know, Gary moved to Los Angeles or whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. No story. It's a, yeah, it's a little painting. Oh, that's kind of dope. Yeah, shit, because this really is a poem with music. It's yeah. not just the lyrics to a song. This sure as hell isn't written to be a top 40 hit. No. Uh, the, it's not a, the classic love letter. It's not a love letter to L.A. No, it is an absolute, hey, I don't know if I like this. <laughs> it's like, eh, it's kind of gross here. Yeah. I'm out of, the, out of my comfort zone. 
You know, and I never thought about what you said, but it's very true. This is from the perspective of a musician, and I lived there as a comedian actor, which is a different thing. And you meet musicians here and there. But yeah. It was different circles. And it's funny, too, because when you meet a musician, if you're a comic, this is my experience. If you meet a real musician and you're a comic, I was always excited to meet them. Sure. Whether or not they were famous, it didn't even matter if they were famous. It just, I was like, oh, you're good, especially if they're good. Well, only if they're good. I shouldn't say especially, only. <laughs> I'm never I'm never excited to see a dude with a fucking guitar until he can actually play. And I'm fucking furious if he can't. I'm mad because, for, because I would never, you know, I would never show up with fucking tools that imply I could fix your car. Yeah. And Go, then, oh, oh, wait, wait, I can get it. I can get it. <laughs> this guy's a mechanic. At the end of it, I fucked up your car. And you're like, no, 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 listen, I'm an aspiring mechanic. Aspiring mechanic. Let me try again. Yeah. And I'm at your party going, hey, I know we're all having fun. Do you guys want to watch me fix a car right now? That's not why we yeah. came here. Uh, Everybody stop talking to each other. <laughs> oh. Oh, wait, I fucked up. Let me start again. <laughs> I hope this tool belt makes his dumb sister want to have sex with me. Oh, and it worked. <laughs> and it worked. Yeah. It worked, it worked. <laughs> I, uh, this is a very quick LA guitar guy story. Was at a party for someone who had just shot a pilot and they just made a lot of money and bought a new house in the Hollywood Hills and nice. had a giant party. So there are a lot of little rooms and there's this one dude, his first name is Hayes, already a problem. And he was in this like dark room playing like a guitar and there was like six girls sitting around listening to him. And he was talking about this song that he wrote. He's like, I wrote this song and I was in this like dark place or whatever. Anyway, here it is. And he started playing it. And it was a song I recognized and knew. Uh, and he was trying to pass it off as something he had written. And so um, I was like standing in the doorway. I was walking by and I stopped to listen to this guy. And he was like, wait, I know that song. And they just started singing along with him. <laughs> and uh, he just like sort of looked up and he's like, oh, you know this one? It's like, yeah, I know that one. Uh, I don't think any of the girls noticed because he actually was really good. <laughs> oh, that's tremendous. Like, what a dickhead. You're very good at the guitar. You can kind of sing. You don't have to lie. Yeah. What's that for? At one party I was at with a musician, he was a pianist. I like, I like pianists way better than guitarists because... For them to play piano for you, they have to make such an effort, or there just has to be a piano there. Yeah. And and if there's a piano there, it means because whoever owns that place likes piano. You're not a nuisance. Right? Your odds are better, at least. Yeah. And, you know, when you play piano, the only place you can play it is at the piano. Yeah, you can't walk around the backyard bothering different groups of people with your piano. Yeah, you're not going to grab it and drag it over by the TV and go, me now, me now. <laughs> and this guy was noodling, and I like noodling a lot. And I started making up dumb lyrics to his noodling, and he liked that. Right. So he, he was a normal dude who was probably planning on hitting on women. Nope. That night, we were just two morons at the piano, not bothering anybody. Ah, the best. It was fantastic. I said we should do a show together. We never did. It was very L.A. That's... <laughs> oh, all... if I could find all the fake shows. <laughs> yes. When they turn into something, it's always such a surprise. Yeah. And it's a nice surprise that it reminds you, well, you got to keep swinging. That was the one good thing about L.A. is you were always cooking something. Yep. You were talking to another person. You were kind of working on something. Yep. 
if you yeah. ever have like long fallow periods. Yeah, that is a lovely, yeah, definitely an aspect of it that I love. And when I visit, I'm planning on enjoying that, even if it's just as observer, but, you know, uh, sometimes as participant, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Hiding up in the mountains, laying low in the canyons, going nowhere in the streets with the Spanish names. This is the last bit, which is just a wrap up. Making <laughs> love with the natives in their Hollywood places, making all making up for all the time gone by. Los Angelinos all came from somewhere. It's so familiar, their foreign faces. I like that last lyric. It is very poet, uh, poet ish. Yeah. Poetic. Po poetic. Yeah, poetic or Polish. Polish. Yeah, it's very Polish. Very Polish. Uh, I like that, um, too. That I like the the last image just makes me think he's talking about how everyone's different, but they all kind of look the same. That everybody reminds you of a face you've seen before. Yeah. And of the character that lives here. Everybody looks a little bit like somebody. Um, but I also like just using the words familiar and foreign. Yeah. Wrap it up because that is sort of the a, a big part of the feeling in LA. Absolutely, yeah. It's a little familiar. Even the city is like this. Kind of looks like a city, and then it kind of doesn't. It looks like a bunch of different cities. Yeah. There are parts of it that look like Florida, and parts that look like Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> First month I lived in LA. I got I did some extra work like everybody does some extra work. It's pretty fun. If you've never done it, it's really fun. And it's a progressively less fun as time goes by. <laughs> yeah. But I was on ER. Nice. Do, do you remember where ER took place? Uh, in Chicago. That's right, baby. <laughs> so the first week I was here, I was on a back lot in Chicago. Oh, and I had just moved here from Chicago and it was yeah. so fun funny how much it didn't look like Chicago <laughs> yeah and, and uh, but it looked enough like it for the camera lens because it just needs to look grimy yep. and they had fake snow on the ground which was fantastic we all had to wear coats and it was fucking hot out <laughs> great and I liked that and I liked passing by I'm like huh I don't remember an old west saloon in Chicago <laughs> <laughs> oh that's really great yeah and then there is a functioning back of a hospital that's probably still there because i'm sure they use it for other things but there was the back of a hospital i'm sure you had this experience watching tv too where you'd go well i know there's not a pizza place near that thing <laughs> yes for sure could it be yeah logistically impossible but here are they that you could always walk to something that you couldn't walk to on ER. Like, We're going to walk over to the museum and then to the pizza place and then to the hospital, you know, <laughs> and then to the mortuary and, you know, and then to the place where they make blimps or whatever. And you're like, I don't think they're all right next to each other. Yeah. It's very funny because the uh, um, diner from Seinfeld exists in real life and it's up on 110th street and it, from the outside looking into it and you're like oh it doesn't look like the interior but looking at it on the street you're like oh this is exactly where it would be <laughs> and you know and there you can imagine their apartments would be nearby there's none of that uh dissonance yeah LA <laughs> and it's a real place your uh, old timey sports car and like no this is wrong <laughs> you can't drive that car and talk on an iPhone yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> the person who drives that car wouldn't have an iPhone that's right 40s. yeah one of those I might have even been Seinfeld where for a minute they were considering using my car for something which would have been extra money. Yeah. I oh. drove my car by. But also I thought a bad idea because I'm not a great driver. <laughs> it's like, well, I'll do it if they ask me, but uh, I don't know. I want to kill an extra. Yeah. Or I'm there like, hey, did you hear what happened to Larry David? <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Well, this is a great story, but Jim killed him. <laughs> Been talking about it for years. I uh, man, I enjoyed that. Uh, I enjoyed those lyrics. I liked the song. Yeah, it's a really nice little song. It's um, and it, it and it makes me melancholy, which is funny. But it's only it's not a melancholy song. It's I you know I was I lived there recently. It's true. And I it's like awesome. it. Pretty fresh. Yeah, and I didn't intend to move. I moved because of an opportunity. I didn't move because I was sick of L.A. I'd have been perfectly happy to die there mysteriously. I liked L.A. That could still happen. That's true. I, on a visit, I guess. Yeah, yeah. That's even better. Oh, that's true. Dogs would witness your horrible death. Yeah, and people would say... <laughs> <laughs> uh I would get eaten by my chihuahua in two weeks is what I'm told it takes. Now that's a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, that's the thing that happens with animals because after a while, they're sad when you die. They are sad. Sure. But after a while, they decide, well, that was my owner, but now they're food. They get real practical very quickly. And you kind of got to admire that. <laughs> I do, and yet I uh, look suspiciously at my cat. <laughs> They're not wrong. They're not wrong. Yeah. It's just uh, unfortunate. Yeah. Luckily, you're not there. <laughs> you're in hell. That's right. You know, I, <laughs> I, I have a picture behind me. Oh. Hey, Seinfeld. That's right. Yeah. Um, I don't know whose house they're in. You know what is funny? Answer that question, and you got your clue. Huh. Well, let's see. We're in other people's houses with some frequency, and they look like they might be at Putty's house. No, they're not at Putty's house. Not at Putty's house. It might be at Elaine's boss's house. It's not Elaine's boss's. Could be upstate. Any upstate? Um, <laughs> so it uh, it's more cl it's closer to Jerry's than upstate. Westchester. <laughs> I'm just saying they're closer to Jerry's place than any of those other people's places. They're mm -hmm. not at Putty's. They're not at you know. To soup Nazi's house for some reason. <laughs> right, right. Closer to Jerry's. Closer to Jerry's. Closer to home. You're my home. No. Uh, what's that? Uh, oh, uh, the armoire. Well, uh, well, it's not Jerry's place. It's Elaine's place? Yes, it's Elaine's. Huh. Okay. I think I got it. Uh, well, it's Big Shot. That's right. It's Big Shot. <laughs> it's big shot. Party that you had at Elaine's. <laughs> we'll let you know the Elaine's. That's right. It's Elaine's. <laughs> uh, I found a way into Big Shot again. Did it. I felt oh. so good. <laughs> if it keeps on taking. <laughs> right. <laughs> right i don't know how many more ways i can get into big shot but i'm gonna try every now and then recognize her place they weren't there much no one right. of the other pictures of hers was too obvious because it's a it's a real estate ad that because you can buy the place where elaine's was <laughs> And so it has the outside just to show you the the brick that it's I believe it's a three story walk up in real life. And uh, and then on the side, it shows you that it's it's a lane. And I believe Putty's actually in that picture. <laughs> but that one's too obvious that it's a lanes. Right. I like this one because it's obvious enough. They're in Elaine's apartment. And she apparently has an armoire. Yeah. Uh, from the armoire episode. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> With the mean uh, gay guys who take it. 
Oh, shit. Is that that armoire? It could be. I think it is. Rad. <laughs> it's rad. Those guys are great. I was in that episode. <laughs> what? Yeah. Was I was a featured extra in that episode. What? Yeah, that's funny that you bring that up. Because if you watch that episode, you'll see me. Because I am one of the guys chasing down Kramer to beat him up. Oh, my God. Yeah. Great. <laughs> right? Oh, I'll keep an eye out for that. And at the time, I remember getting <laughs> calls from my friends and families. Like, yeah, oh, you're in Seinfeld. And I would go, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Not really. It's nice that you <laughs> called me. I'm an extra, but I'm one. It's one of the few times when you're an extra where somebody will go, "Oh yeah," and I'm not kidding you. Like a month ago, a comic friend of mine wrote me out of the blue and said, "Hey, were you an extra on Seinfeld?" I was like, "Yes, yes, I was." Ah, that's great. Yes, I was. Oh, nice. And I was. It was a good, you always hoped it'd be more because you got picked out of the crowd and you're like, oh, is this going to turn? No, it's just an extra, but still, very nice. Very nice. It, it leads to a couple of phone calls. Yeah. What's the harm? Bit of trivia about Seinfeld. Uh, some of the worst craft services <laughs> oh. I've ever had. Interesting. Okay. Unfortunate. Uh, yeah. Maybe on another day it was better, but it felt very much like they didn't feel like feeding you. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, sorry, bud. That's all right. Still kind of mad. No. <laughs> you turned into a really mad episode for you. Oh, it's such a funny <laughs> memory. It's such a funny memory to be going to what's at the time the biggest show in the world. And all I could think about was... I'm hungry. Have you, you're supposed to have food for us. <laughs> what you're not supposed to have is, okay, we're going to have a break so you guys can go down to the commissary and pick yourself up something up to eat. I'm, I'm buying my own food today. I'm but working here. Part of being an extra is not getting paid well, but being fed. Hmm. All right. I think I got a pretty decent little meal when I was an extra on Home Alone too. Of course, that's a feature film. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh yeah, I, there were a couple ones when I was a when I was an extra on The Phantom, with I believe Alec Baldwin was in that I think, and Billy Zane. <laughs> uh, I got great food, and it was a cool experience because I got to see stuntmen do horse tricks. Oh, great! That was actually really great to see in real life. No doubt. The Phantom at one point jumps off of a horse onto a moving taxi cab. Wow. And I watched them film that stunt. Great. Terrible movie, I guess. I guess. I've never heard of it. I watched it. It was just, it was a, a misfire where they thought, oh, you know what people want to see? The 1940s serial The Phantom brought back. <laughs> Oh, that's one of those uh, meetings somebody had at a party. Yep. And they made it happen. Because they loved it. Their grandpa introduced them to audio tapes of it or something. And... A whole new generation to the Phantom. Nope. Yeah. Just yeah. Alec Baldwin. Just Alec Baldwin, but pre-shooting someone. Well, I got a trivia question for you. Bust. <laughs> uh, we didn't start the fire. Yes. Uh, mentions a lot of real people. First real person mentioned is Harry Truman. Who is the last real person mentioned? We didn't start the fire. Oh. Am I remembering correct that it's Harry Truman, Doris Day? Yeah. Red China. Are we doing the whole song? I'm trying to remember. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. I remember it was Jared from Subway. <laughs> Jared from Subway. All right, we'll see you next week. I did it. I did it. <laughs> Jared from Subway. <laughs> um, Elvis. 
No. They could have. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's let's be logical about this because we're going through history. So then we get to a current time. Which at that time. Would have been the 80s. Right? Would early oh. 80s, mid 80s? Early so, 80s. Yeah. Uh, Bernie Getz. Bernie Getz. I did it. You got it. Oh, great. Look All at right. that. I applied a little bit of logic. See? And I got Elvis. there. And I've heard the damn song. It would make no sense to end with Elvis. <laughs> It would make sense to end with George, uh, Jared from Subway. That would actually make sense. That was closer. Yeah. Bernie Getz. Okay, good. Good, good job, Jim. Good, good job. Sense. Good job, brain. Yeah. See, and you know, got this one. Didn't destroy your brain. Yeah. And you got that one. I got that one eventually. <laughs> you got it pretty quick. Because, you know, you're probably in the back of your mind. You're always thinking, well, it's probably a big shot. <laughs> <laughs> I should be. It was that three-week layoff. That's right. So you for, forgot the rule of of twelve, where every twelve episodes is that what it is? The rule of twelve. Oh, hi Sue. Hi. Good job on getting Bert Gats, man. Thank you. I, so supportive. I'm terrible at trivia. A lot of times, I remember. Paul and I went to bar trivia and I pulled a um, Kevin Malone from the office and won. And I was like, oh, there we go. You guys don't know that you just lost to a brain that doesn't do this. <laughs> you all should feel bad. Yep. And I'll never come back. But it was that magic thing where they asked questions that I was like, they asked a question about American Sign Language. And I was like, oh, my sister's deaf. Here we go. And then it was other things, you know, just yeah. things that I would know. That's what happened. Yeah, I, I was on I, it's how I won Ben Stein's money. Were you on that show? I was on that show. I don't remember. That's awesome. I hide him. So I got to split the money. But what? there were categories about one was about the military. I grew up in the military and then one was about theater. Like oh. theater terms, and I killed. Wow, that is fantastic! That's uh, oh, bit of trivia about Ben Stein. That guy's a piece of shit. <laughs> I knew that one. <laughs> yeah the the question is, hey, who's the piece of shit? And the answer is Ben. St yeah, you got it. You got the whole, it. The whole bar says it in unison. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, this was. This one was kind of a gimme, but everybody gets points. <laughs> they love to do that. Then you, I used to hate it when you play Trivial Pursuit and someone would pull a card and they go, oh, this one's so easy. And then they'd read the question and you had no idea. Yeah. You were, oh, yeah. Shit. So easy and, for uh, you. Yeah. Yeah. All of them are easy if you're holding the card. All of them are easy if you're holding the card. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I guess it is that. <laughs> All right. Episode 56, what are we doing? 56 is how old I am, which puts me in the mind of a very weird little song from the early days called Fallen of the Rain. Fallen of the Rain. I don't even know if I remember it. Is it R A I N or Rain? <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh. Because <laughs> it's like, is it a really weird song? Fallen of the Rain. Oh, no. No. Lord of the Rings follow up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Now, it looks to me like Sue's cooking dinner. Yeah, man. Well, then let's wrap it up so you can go eat dinner. I'm going to go eat dinner. Fantastic to see you again. You too. Um, and, uh, look very shiny and new. I'm excited I'm, to see what happens next week. Uh, yeah, there'll be a new scar here or something. 